welcome back to the channel I know it's been a while since I've put up a video I've been busy doing quite a bit of stuff but today we're out here working again and again it's on another vehicle so this is my 2000 Chevrolet Silverado it's what I drive every day and we're having an issue I replaced the the original radiator cracked back in January I put a cheap aftermarket one in and it's already cracked so uh, today we're gonna tear into this get the old radiator out put us a new radiator in here and uh, later on I also have some updates on the C10 it's been coming along we got the fenders back on the inner fenders everything got the seat it's not completely done but good enough to ride on um, put the hood on and it's currently getting exhaust on it and we'll put some new wheels and tires on it and it's looking a lot better we got some LED lights in there so there will be an update coming on the C10 pretty soon but for today Let's go ahead and let's tear into this and start tearing it apart. So the first thing that we're going to do, you got to remove all these little clips here. And this is this job's pretty easy if you have a trim tool, removal tool for these specific little plastic clips. Um, the one I'm using here is a Snap-on A181. Um, several companies make these, but it's a whole lot easier than trying to pry it up with a screwdriver. They just work better and they don't tear up these plastic fasteners like the uh, like a screwdriver wheel just gonna take all of these out here All right, so now we can lift off this top shroud here. Set this out of the way to the side. And now, got to pull the air intake off. You got two little screws right there and right there. We're gonna pull this piece out of the way. out of the way so the next piece we got to remove is the fan shroud there's a top and bottom to this so we're going to start removing that again you're going to need your little trim tool get down here and pop these out On the fan shroud there are four of these little plastic retaining clips and there are also two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on go ahead and get that out of the way As you can see the clips go there and there and then it's the same on the other side um, when the trucks hot like this you might want to be careful because you can 
burn yourself on the radiator hoses and everything being that it's been running. Alright, so now we got all four of our plastic clips out of the way. Now we're going to take these two bolts loose. Alright, now we got our two bolts out of the way. And on the passenger side, there's a little clip to hold the hose, one of the hoses in. Just gonna lift up on that, pop that free. And now we are going to be able to lift the top part of the shroud out of the way. Now the bottom shroud. rotate it and move everything around. Now that's out of the way. I don't know if y'all be able to see this or not, but this frame rail over here is, uh, you can tell it's been leaking a little bit on it. It's wet. And there's definitely a smell of coolant leaking. I think it's probably one of the plastic tanks cracked. That's what happened on the first radiator. So now we should get all this out of the way. Got this little hose over here on the side. This little drain hose to drain the radiator. You want to put you a bucket under there and push the hose down to where that bucket will catch it. And you got a little, a little pitcock right here gonna open this up it's gonna let the radiator drain so now we're gonna get us a bucket and get this started hey guys so now we got our uh, bucket under the hose here and we're gonna crack this loose We're just going to let this drain and uh, obviously we're going to try to catch as much cooling as we can. You're not going to catch everything, but uh, we're going to try to catch what we can. And doing it this way, you aren't going to, you're going to get most of the fluid out. You won't get everything, um, but you will get quite a bit of it. And when you pull your radiator hoses loose, that's when you'll drain even more. And like I said, try to catch as much as you can, but you won't catch everything, so you'll have to replace some. So now we've let it drain for a while. Like I said, you ain't going to get all of it. So we're going to take loose 
the bottom radiator hose and uh, move my bucket down there so that should uh, that should help catch whatever coolant is left so let's go ahead and pull this hose and try to not take a bath in coolant today Who's clamp there? Eh, we didn't do too bad. We didn't take too much of a bath. Now we're going to take loose the upper radiator hose. Get a towel here. Our hose clamp broke loose. So now all we got to do is pull the top radiator hose and then we got to disconnect the transmission cooler lines. Then we can pull this radiator out. Let's get our bucket moved. So now that that's off, now we're going to take loose. Got to pull this hose here and this small one here, the little return line. And then we got these two transmission cooler lines. I don't know how well y'all can see this or not. We got these little clips right in there, and that's what holds the line in. So we got to remove them. Just take a flat screwdriver. And uh, you can usually use it to kind of pry the little clips off. Um, I always save the old clips. Papa always taught me that to save them. Now your new radiator will typically come with them, but it's always good to have a spare just in case. Because one of the new ones is missing or if it's already messed up, you got something to kind of fall back. Alright, so we got that hose off. And we'll take loose this other hose right here. Alright, you 
out that hose clamp broke loose. Alright, now as y'all can see, we've got them two broke off. And uh, now we're going to use our flat screwdriver here. Just sort of pry that off. I don't know if y'all were able to see that very well or not. Just take, y'all can see right in there where the, just kind of stick the flat screwdriver in there and push on it. And it'll pop loose. And you just take it and push it down, and you get your little clip to come out. So now we should be able to just pull the transmission lines. Yep. And you will lose a little bit of trans fluid, so it's a good idea after you've done this to uh, check a level in your transmission you might have to add some but uh, there's that so now what's left is got this bolt here and this bolt here that hold the radiator to the radiator support we're going to take them out and um, should be able to just lift the radiator right out of here These two bolts here are 13 millimeters. So we're just gonna take them off. And then we can lift this radiator right out. side and then just do the same process on the other side I'm using a quarter inch drive ratchet because these bolts should not be very tight just gonna take them out then we'll lift this radiator out of here so we got all of our bolts out everything's disconnected now we're just gonna lift the radiator out set it to the side
Now we got to run over to the parts store, pick up our new radiator because it's a warranty because it isn't even a year old and it's already cracked. But we're going to run over to the parts store, pick us up our new radiator, come back and we're going to put this in.
Yeah, so that's basically the process on how you replace a radiator on a 2000 Chevrolet Silverado. Should be the same for like the 99, the early 07s, the Silverados and the Sierras. Um, right now we're just letting the system purge any air out or anything, but that's how you do it. So thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and keep up with the channel.